change your micro probo. The phone might have change your probo. Right. Welcome to a new presentation. Um, this is a presentation on how to make a presentation. So basically, we're uh, going to explore the very basic fundamental principles of designing a good presentation and uh, why some things are important and some things are not. OK, so what's the purpose of a presentation? What are presentations all about? Presenting, Presenting what? Data. Giving information. Communication. communication. Exactly. The main goal for any good presentation is communication. Right, so the main uh, thing about communication sometimes is that uh, it's pretty hard. So good communication is quite hard to achieve. Um, there are a lot of examples. I've settled, settled on this because it's easiest to, to see. This is the same word in five different languages, very different words in very different languages. Uh, but this, this is not the only barrier we encounter when trying to uh, create a good presentation. So, what can we do? First of all, we need to identify who the audience is, who's listening to us, who is going to be uh, the uh, uh, receptor for our uh, communication uh, messages. Of course, you should uh, have different uh, ways of communicating with different kinds of people, and um, achieving this and understanding this is essential to, to making a good, a good presentation. Uh, so adapting to the context, putting yourself in the shoes of, of your audience is, uh, is important because you need to know who they are, you need to know uh, how, should they, uh, uh, how, how you, you need to talk to them so they can understand you. First of all, understanding is, is one of the most important things. And then hooking them into believing what you, what you want to say is, uh, is another thing. Uh, an example, of a very sh a simple example is how would you uh, describe the functionality of a, of a website uh, to one of your colleagues and to your mother. Uh, there are, I mean, uh, the worlds are completely different. It's a completely separate um, um, audience, and you need to adapt your message to that audience. Okay, um, you need to define your main ideas. This is also important because uh, many people skip this part altogether. Information, of course, is critical. You need to be able to define what you want to communicate. So uh, the, the ideas it, uh, in themselves are very important. These are the, the most important uh, things. Next, you need to have some sort of delight. You need to uh, make your audience uh, respond emotionally, and you'll see why in a moment. And everything else is secondary. So information and delight this is what you if, if you live with something today this is what I need you to, to remember information and delight why because the brain is a very effective tool uh, in remembering what it gets excited about so if, if, if there's an emotion connected to a piece of information you are more much more likely to perceive it and to remember it than if just it's just a pure information uh, and there, there's a fun fact here uh, there are differences between sexes. So uh, women tend to remember a lot of details compared to men, because men. Let me let me play your video. <laughs> yeah, because men. Let me play your video. One second, please. One second. Let me turn up the volume here, if I can. Okay. Hmm? Audio settings. Ah, the volumes at. What's the volume that you bring? Ah, so the subtitles. Ah, I will do that. Yeah. Let me see. What are some different options? Yeah, tablet. What? What are the? Very good thinking. Thank you. I'm not sure if it. Yeah. Let me try to plug it in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll turn the volume down a bit. 
Massive it works. Alright, now men's brains are, are very unique. Men's brains are made up of little boxes. And we have a box for everything. We've got a box for the car, we've got a box for the money, we've got a box for the job, we've got a box for you, we've got a box for the kids, we've got a box for your mother somewhere in the basement. We got we got, we, we got boxes everywhere. And, and the rule is the boxes don't touch. <laughs> when a man discusses a particular subject, we go to that particular box. We pull that box out. We open the box. We discuss only what is in that box. All right? And, and, and then we close the box and put it away being very, very careful not to touch any other boxes. So now you see? Can I make a joke? Yeah, sure. You must have the wounds of brain. <laughs> there are different kinds of people uh, throughout uh, this company and in the world, of course. We're all different. But the idea is that uh, emotion is important. We'll get to that later a bit. Um, until we get to that, uh, another principle, another good principle for you to take into account when you design a presentation is giving examples. Because the power of examples uh, are, is extremely high, especially when you try to explain a new concept, a new idea, something novel. So, ideas are useless if the audience, the audience doesn't understand them or believe them. And uh, examples from the audience's experience, and that's where you need some empathy a bit to place yourself in the in the shoes of the audience, helps them to relate to what you're saying. So, uh, in this uh, particular uh, case, metaphors are also extremely powerful tools that can help people establish an emotional relationship to an idea. Um, I'm sure you all, you've all seen this. This is uh, a metaphor on how people perceive things in a company. Uh, how the customer explained it, how the project leader understood it, how the engineer designed it, how the programmer wrote it, how the sales executive described it, <laughs> how the project was documented, <laughs> what operation, uh, operations installed, how the customer was billed, of course, how the help that supported it, and what the customer really actually needed, in fact. 
So this is a good metaphor for how things work in a company. But of course, you can find metaphors about ev everything. Um, and the last but not least, coherent styling. This is uh, one of the less important issues, but it's still important if you want to be credible, if you want people to believe what you're saying with a um, greater nuance. So coherence rocks. Having two fonts is more than enough alongside size variations, having bold, italic, and some colors in your presentation. Uh, this does not work. So don't try to make your presentation uh, something like this with uh, 100 different fonts 100 different colors things popping up everywhere and so on this does not work um, a helpful tool for us at least is uh, a very useful site uh, octavian and his uh, marketing colleagues did it's called the uh, every matrix directory and it's uh, extremely useful to download your uh, needed materials if you want to create a presentation you have fonts you have you even have branding elements like logos and so on and you have PowerPoint uh, template here. OK, so enough theory. Let's um, get into the practical examples a bit. There's a procedure. If you want to stick to it, that's fine. But you can make your own. It doesn't matter. It's as long as the results are, um, uh, the results respect uh, the, the, the things we've said earlier. So uh, when I usually uh, make a presentation, I start with a list of ideas. I love lists. I'm sure you all know I love lists, especially those people who have worked with me on uh, actual projects. I love making lists, lists of bugs, lists of features, lists of everything. So I start with a list of ideas. Then I structure them logically. So the first step is not um, structured at all. I just blurt out everything I, I think of. And then I structure them logically. Then, only then, I draft the slides. And I do a rough draft. I don't get into details on every slide. And then at the end, I add delight. Um, some practical tips concerning what we've uh, covered so far. Starting with a list of ideas and ordering them logically helps a lot because uh, it makes you think about the ideas themselves and not how the presentation looks. And this is important. Then, uh, I mean, I love lists. Uh, I'm also, I also have a, a teeny wincy bit of OCD, but that's not relevant here. <laughs> um, then. Starting the presentation after it's extremely clear what you have to say is also important. Of course, most of our presentations usually uh, take into account the fact that we have a set goal. So we'll, we already know this. We, all, you, we can skip this step altogether. But sometimes you don't know what you want to say, uh, which has been my case today. I have no idea what I wanted to say exactly on, uh, on this presentation. So I took the step and I, I uh, went through it. And um, of course, this uh, prevented me from, have, from having to do the presentation twice, or uh, redesigning or refactoring the presentation. <laughs> uh, and uh, mistakes like this uh, tend to happen quite often, but if you do your homework right at the beginning, you shouldn't uh, face this uh, when you're doing the presentation itself. Now, each slide should have a minimal text, should have minimal text in a very large type size, like you see here or imagery, or both, but a little, bit, a little bit of both. So that's the anchor for the idea you're trying to, to convey. Uh, if you have an anchor, you can then go off rails and talk about anything you like and anything that goes through your head when you look at that anchor. But the anchor is important for the audience to remember uh, to have a visual cue of your idea. And the rest is verbal, as you see. Uh, Twitter got this right, basically. Every, every tweet is basically a maximum uh, character uh, admission for a slide. So 160 characters is uh, the maximum number of characters allowed on a slide from my point of view because you won't get the people to read more than that. Graphs and photos are better than walls of text. They grasp the essential idea without effort. This is uh, what I'm trying to say here. Uh, the, uh, the, the thing on the left is very short, concise, and if you zoom in, you can see all the details at once. And the thing on the right has 16 pages. So it's the same information. It's just presented differently. And when you do a presentation, uh, your, your point is to convey the idea as concise as possible and convince the people you're, you're presenting to that your idea is important, not getting into all the possible details of the idea. Uh, this is also nice. Um, Information is Beautiful is a site uh, based on presentation, um, uh, I mean, visual presentations. And this is a presentation about supplements. 
this is the worth taking threshold. So everything above is worth taking, everything below is not worth taking. Let me show you this in, in actual, uh, let me show you the actual site. So everything down here is not worth taking. And you can immediately see when you scan this, that this is very clear. I mean, everything above this line is, is good, uh, statistically speaking and medically speaking. There have been studies to prove that this works. So coffee works for asthma, for example. Uh, honey uh, works for antimicrobial activity, and so on. Um, text does not achieve this at all. Okay, more slides uh, is preferable than less slides. If you have more slides but with concise information, each, inf each, each slide should have one idea, and that's it. Uh, that's much better than having one slide with 10 ideas and uh, having to walk through them all. Uh, it takes a, a bit of, um, of effort for the people you're presenting to to be attentive to everything you say if, you're, if your slides are static. If you have one slide with 10 ideas and you go on for half an hour talking about that slide, you will lose attention. But having more slides keeps people interested. They uh, gravitate to, to your idea. And of course, nobody reads walls of text. So anybody who's uh, been doing uh, presentations with extremely large uh, amounts of text uh, isn't doing the good job. They should be. OK, don't over-engineer your special effects. So uh, some uh, uh, presentation tools have a lot of special effects, a lot of uh, uh, dazzles and um, bells and so on. Um, a good presentation is more about the message than text blinging and uh, swooping in and coming in and coming out. Don't focus on that. That's a waste of time most of the time. However, uh, in the same category, let's say, uh, I've, I've used the word delight uh, quite a lot. Uh, delight uh, isn't necessarily the only thing that will move your audience and uh, engage them emotionally. You can amaze them. You can shock them. You can do anything they don't expect, basically, so that your idea is imprinted in, in their brains, like the guy said in the stand-up. So um, it's not easy. It's a skill you develop in time. You have to accumulate experience on this, and you have to work on it. I mean, really work on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I got your attention, right? <clears throat> so any questions? <laughs> Especially for Tika. <laughs> Questions? No? Nobody? Thank you. Oh, sure. So, uh, how important do you think is uh, you know, improvising? Make a um, it's a good skill to have, of course. It's not something you can uh, uh, discard. But um, if you do your homework, you don't need to improvise very, very much. Because if you do your homework and you, uh, you're prepared for the subject, um, what people ask you tend to, tend to be information that you already have. So you don't need to improvise per se. Improvisation, I mean, uh, improvising in the presentation, it's in the way you present things. That's another thing. Uh, it's it's a social skill, and uh, some people have it, some people don't. I mean, you don't. You, you're not required to have it. I've I've seen some wonderful presentations made by people who are uh, anti antisocial and uh, not good at talking, per se. But they they had such clear uh, slides and uh, such uh, such a good way of going through them that you understood everything they had to say and you believed them basically. Uh, a good uh, place to see uh, how good presentations are made, not all of them, but some of them, is uh, TED.com. It's a good uh, hub for, for presentations in general because that's what people do there. They present their ideas and uh, share them with the world. And uh, uh, as far as improvisa improvisation goes, you, you can learn. This is a, a also a learned skill. You can study a bit uh, what you can grasp about uh, the information at hand and talking skills, basically. And uh, you can be a better presenter with that. But it's not required, as I said. Well, I guess that's that going to go to my next question. So how about uh, tell that what, what you presented was uh, more about for the kind of presentation or that you, you just present? And at the end, uh, are there any questions, right? What if there's um, interactive presentations where you know, people can jump in at any moment in time and that kind of stuff? Um, the interactive presentations, of course, are um, focused on 
what you do rather than what you present. I think. I mean, uh, uh, there are different kinds of presentations, but uh, in general, the same principles apply. You need to keep your your audience uh, engaged. You need to show them things uh, that uh, keep them interested and uh, uh, want to talk with you. You know, because if you have uh, something bland to say, they they won't be attentive or communicate with you at all. So uh, interactive pre presentations are um, structured a bit differently. So I, uh, in an interactive presentation, I'll probably go through all these steps. Let me. So uh, uh, I presented some steps here. Uh, one second. There we go. List of ideas, structuring, fast draft the slides, and add delay. But in an interactive presentation, there is a fifth step: preparing the 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 context. So you can you need to go through all of this to make a good presentation, but you also need to be very aware of the context and the range of, of questions people might ask you. And then if you prepare for those, you're more likely to succeed in having a good presentation. Yes. 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 And then he said, let's see, you open web store, he started the code. Um, right there, live, live coding. Yeah, there's a, principle, there's a principle in um, uh, comedy, especially in comedy with improvisation. So the principle is that when you interact with other people and uh, want to do a, an improv comedy, you need to accept everything they say. You can't say, no, I don't want to do that. And if you do that, uh, people will react extremely positively to, to the experience itself because they don't meet any blockers, they don't meet any ne negativity, and they also um, see that you're up for the task. And this is very important. Uh, making a good presentation is a bit like leadership because you need to lead the people who are watching you through your ideas until they understand them. Yes, I and and uh, uh, the fact that he actually uh, took it as a challenge and showed it to you is great because uh, he does he didn't say no and he went went with it and uh, went it to uh, I mean took it to the end. Any other questions? Not really question. I want to add. Uh, sure. Uh, say. Uh, tip. Uh, if you have animations in your slides, uh, usually uh, get the attention from uh, the audience. Uh, it is very good because when something is moving, your eyes uh, are watching that moving thing. Sure. So it's good to use this uh, trick, but not, sure. uh, not overuse it. Yes. Of course. Of course. Okay. Thank you. That has been okay. it.